Hello, I'm Brad Markham from Holstein, Frisia, New Zealand. Well, hundreds of dairy farmers have used an embryo transfer program to fast track genetic gain in their herds. If you're considering flushing one of your top cows or buying an elite empty to flush, what are the things you need to consider? Well, joining me now is Jackie Forsyth from Animal Breeding Services or ABS. Hi, Jackie, thanks for your time. Thanks, Brad. Jackie, what are some of the things that dairy farmers need to consider when implementing an embryo transfer program? I think they need to have a pretty clear objective in mind of why they're wanting to flush an animal um, and what they hope to get out of it. Um, that's the, if you don't go in with the right expectations, I guess uh, that's when you get disappointed when you don't get the outcome you expected. Um, so you need to have some pretty clear thoughts. Um, there's obviously a bit of cost involved, so you, you, know, you need to be aware of what it's going to cost and whether that's going to meet your needs. Um, and I think you need to consider the whole project. So not just the matter of making embryos, that's the first step, but really importantly, the outcome has to be making your live calves. And so um, you need to thought through how, how you would manage the whole process. How important is preparation of the donor cow or heifer in the lead up to eggs being collected? It's really important um, and I guess the thing that people, a lot of people don't understand is that um, actually the important bit is what's happened to the animal in the two months prior to the collection. So um, it takes two months for the time from the eggs being recruited to the time that we were able to pick them up. And so um, <clears throat> whatever was exposed to that animal two months ago will, will be re reflected in the quality of their eggs. So um, if an animal was going through a health check at that time or um, often they will be going through calving around that time. Um, that will impact on the quality of the eggs. So you really do need to make sure that, you, you know, you're thinking ahead about what you may do with your donors in two months time and making sure that they're in the, the optimum condition for that. What do you and your team do, Jackie, uh, when they come onto farm? So um, it, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, for most of our work is done by the IVP process. Um, and so um, that's an ultrasound collection of eggs from the donors um, <clears throat> and that is, um, a process where we can come into the, um, your donor at any stage and take eggs from their cycle without um, any pre-treatment or any post-treatment of that donor. So um, from a farmer's perspective, all you need to do is draft out the animal on the morning that we're coming. Um, <clears throat> our guys will arrive, we travel in a team of three, so there will be a, um, a vet, an assistant and an embryologist. Um, and the animal is put into a, a crash or a race or whatever um, mechanism you have to hold the animal still. Um, and given an epidural, which uh, basically just numbs the back end of her um, body for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> and just means that we can operate on her without her feeling anything and also without any risk to her or us. Um, and so the operator um, picks up the ovary um, with, uh, through the rectum um, and the, we have a, uh, an ultrasound probe that goes into the vagina. Um, and the ovary is brought to the ultrasound probe and there's a very fine needle <clears throat> that runs along the top of the probe that goes through the vaginal wall and aspirates the eggs out of the ovary. So on an ovary, um, an egg sits in the follicle, which is, just looks like a blister. So if on an ultrasound screen, it's a, it's a black dot, it's a black space. Um, we have a pump connected to that system and that li literally sucks the fluid out of those um, blisters and um, the eggs come with them. So <clears throat> that's, um, we go through and we take all the um, eggs off each ovary and then it uh, is taken to our van which comes with the embryologist and they search for the eggs on site and put them into a, um, uh, the media that they go on for the next 24 hours. So that process takes a bit about 15 minutes so to be honest often the time to set up and pack up is longer than the process itself and, and at the end of that process the cow can just walk out of the crossing on her normal way. So. And uh, it's far less invasive than it used to be, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, um, it, it's I mean, the fact that we're doing this method rather than mullet where you don't have to do the, um, the treatment with the injections and stuff beforehand is a, a much nicer treatment for the animals and often, you know, your donor cow is one of your favourite or best cows. The last thing you want to do is annoy her by having to inject her twice a day <clears throat> for a period of time and potentially interfere with her um, cycling. So, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a simple process for the cow. The cows are, are happy in, in the process and happy afterwards. Mating um, is still months away for spring calving farmers, but is this a good time, obviously, to sort of start thinking about um, suitable recipient cows to, to carry those embryos? 
Yeah, this is the ideal time. I, I would say the biggest mistake probably in um, embryo programs is that people forget about the recips and um, that they are the most important thing in lots of ways. It's easy enough to make embryos, but to get pregnancies, you need to be considering the recips and considering them early. So um, yeah, now's the time to be thinking about those um, <clears throat> and to be thinking about uh, whether you will be using your lactating cows um, as recips, uh, how you could manage those so that they're in the ultimate uh, condition at the time you want to use them um, and or whether you would you know you want to invest in some dry cows which will give you a better result but probably aren't something you'd normally have in your farming operation so um, yeah so now is definitely the time to be thinking about it and I think as soon as you start considering an ET program your first thought should be what will I do with the embryos. What are some of the best ways uh, to get those cows cycling together? Yeah, so you sort of got three options when it comes to um, putting the embryos back in. You um, can use natural heats, which is obviously the cheapest and um, in the, it fits into a normal farming system easily enough. The, the downside of that, I guess, is that um, you, you have to choose the heat over a two day window. Um, and uh, if you have the wrong animals that come on, up on those two days, then you know you, you may be putting wanting to put embryos in your best cow, which is obviously not what you want to do. So um, you, you lose the pre-selection by doing that, um, but it's an option. Um, the, the second option is using a seeder program. Um, this is obviously <clears throat> the most expensive way to um, create recipients, but it's also the most accurate. So uh, every animal almost that you put a seeder in will uh, cycle on the correct day, so will be able to be used. Um, so it's, it's a very good way of um, using a smaller number of recipes, but knowing you'll get the right number at the end that you need for the transfers. Um, and the third option is PG, um, which is obviously a minimal intervention. Um, it's just one injection. It's a lower cost, <coughs> um, but uh, only 65% of the animals that you inject will be suitable. And um, you get a wider window of heat, so not necessarily everything that comes on heat would be able to be used because we can only operate over two days um, for the transfers. Are there any common pitfalls that careful planning can help avoid? Yeah, I, th I think the recip one is probably the biggie, you know, like getting um, the recips prepared in advance, not just because often um, people identify the donors that they want to flush and they um, get that part of the process uh, moving and then they go, oh, what am I going to do with these embryos, you know, and then it's kind of too late and it's right in the busy part of the season. So, um, yeah, I think the biggest, the biggest risk is to um, not be thinking about the recips right from the beginning. Um, and making sure that you've got suitable animals. Um, so, you know, with the recips, you need to make sure that, you know, that they've, they've had all their health checks, they've um, got no trace element issues, no reproductive issues, no mastitis or metritis, um, <clears throat> you know, that they've had at least one mating, post mating, uh, sorry, post calving heat, um, those sorts of things, eight weeks post calving, all of those things so that um, you're well ahead of the game and can identify who, who might be suitable recips early on. Sounds like record keeping is really vital then. Yeah, I think record keeping is important for everything these days, but yeah, for sure. And you know, you need to have obviously the animals need to be well identified, so that's going to be part of the process as well. But yeah, for sure, you need to absolutely know who your animals are and which ones you want to use. If there's a young farmer or a 50 50 share milker watching who's considering an ET program, uh, how much might it cost? So it comes out to about $400 per embryo transferred. So um, that's average figures because obviously every animal is different. But um, if you if you look at an average figure and you, you put that in your budget, you'd probably be about on track. Excellent. Hey, is there anything else you'd like to add there, Jackie? Uh, no, I just think um, you know it's um, it's a, it's a big investment. So if people are considering doing some transfer work, then by all means uh, have a chat with us. Um, I'm always happy to talk about the stuff. It's uh, my bread and butter, and I will happily talk for hours and solve people's problems and help put in place the best program for them. So, um, yeah, so no, it's, uh, um, I understand that, you know, people really want to get the best out of their cows in the ET program. So I'm happy to work through it with them. Your company is sort of Waikato based, but you obviously travel to other regions. How sort of far afield do you go? Yeah, so we cover the, the whole of the country. Um, so you're correct, we are Waikato based, um, but starting in sort of July, we start sending teams every second week to regions. Um, <clears throat> and obviously that's uh, dictated by demand, but um, we try to hit every region every two weeks. 
Um, and um, yeah, so for, for, for most of July to December, we don't see many of our, our team, we just pass in the nights, but um, that's how we like it and we like to be busy. So yeah, so um, there's nowhere we don't really go. Um, and we just sort of, uh, as work comes in, we'll sort of group people together and try and keep the cost down for everybody and do runs through each week. That's been really helpful and informative advice. Jackie Forsyth from ABS, thanks for your time. And if you'd like more information, head to www.abreeds.co.nz. Goodbye.